Well, welcome back. Fences are often used to mark your property. Create some privacy in your neighborhood, but that doesn't mean that they have to look like your typical fence. Yeah, they don't have to be boring. This morning, garden guy Dale Kay is showing off some natural living fences. Good morning, Dale. Good morning. As you mentioned, we've been using fences since really the dawn of time to kind of separate space, maybe even protect our food. But today, especially in urban settings, we tend to use them a little bit more as maybe uh, marking property lines, um, things of that nature, some privacy, as you mentioned. The great thing about living fences is they do so much more, and it kind of almost makes more sense to me. Instead of cutting down a tree to make a cedar fence, you can plant a tree instead, a little bit more sustainable. It kind of makes perfect sense to me. But they also offer some noise buffering as well, uh, some interest, some natural beauty. So there's a lot more to living fences than just your standard chain link fence or maybe even uh, a, a wood fence or a vinyl fence, something like that. A couple of things that you can do uh, to uh, create that living fence is uh, a group of plants called climbing vines. And there's many of them out there. Um, a couple of my favorites to, to create a living wall out of, this one here is honeysuckle. Of course, you get the great honeysuckle flower that hummingbirds absolutely love and all the other pollinators love. Um, but it's really kind of a dense bramble that does, um, by the way, need support. So you can see it's on a little uh, wood trellis there. And you would put it on a, a panel like this or maybe against an existing fence to help kind of soften that up a little bit. So the, the, uh, the honeysuckle needs support. The other great one that will latch really onto anything um, is wisteria, um, a great dense foliage, um, very almost aggressive in growth habit, um, has a beautiful panicle blue flower, a little bit like the southern uh, wisterias, but this particular one is blue, um, very hardy um, in this neck of the woods. This is RD. And then also you've got all the kind of the Virginia creepers, the Inglewood ivy. This one here is Inglewood ivy. And this one has little tendrils. So you can see these kind of curly cues right on the end here that will actually attach to just about anything as well. So if you've got a chain link fence, you know, they're kind of ugly. Oh my gosh, not so pretty to look at. So that does a, that does a really good job of uh, softening that up as well. And if you create, if you had panels, uh, really any type of panel like a trellis, you could put them in a line and uh, that would create a wonderful natural barrier. There's also some uh, very dense, thick shrubbery that you can plant, uh, taller shrubs, there's hydrangeas, this particular one is gray dogwood. It's actually a native to Minnesota um, and does very, very well in kind of the colder temperatures here, bounces back early in the spring. Um, that's also another great living fence. The disadvantages to some of these is they, of course, lose their leaves in the winter. They're deciduous. That means the leaves drop in the fall. Um, so you kind of lose that screen come the winter months. Then we move into the evergreens um, that, of course, keep their needles year-round, the conifers. Um, this is uh, Swiss stone pine. It's a wonderful little pine. Gets to about 15 feet or so, so it's not really super huge. Great for the urban setting. Um, and that one, a standalone shrub, planted or dovetail, would make a great natural barrier. And then there's arborvitaes, which is probably undoubtedly some of the better uh, natural screens. You can see this one behind me, uh, rather established. This particular one is called Techni, and probably the best one for creating that natural fence line or that natural screen. Some other ones, actually there's one I don't like, so let's get, let's do, get the one I don't like out of the way. Um, that's Emerald Arborvitae. I like it, but it tends to burn if it's out on its own. So, you know, if you're using it like as a windbreak or a windscreen or you're out in the country, um, be careful with this one. It's more of, of an urban plant. It does uh, tend to burn a little bit, all that winter burn. So I don't generally recommend planting that one in mass just in case you lose one. It's really kind of tough to replace. Um, some ones that are really, really hardy. This particular one, this particular arborvitae is called North Pole. They all kind of, you get the, you get the general gist there kind of a green, uh, just a green screen. This one here back here, Pyramidal Arborvitae, that's a great one as well. This one here is called De Groot Spire. And this is really a very, very narrow. So if you've got a really like a narrow space, only a couple of feet, uh, De Groot Spire is a good one to choose. And of course, I mentioned Techni, uh, pound for pound, dollar for dollar, uh, you really can't beat it as a screen. Super hardy, stays dense doesn't get chewed up too much by bunnies and, and mice, which can be a little bit of an issue with arborvitaes. And then the last one here 
is the Wichita Blue Juniper. There's also Medora Juniper as well, which is a good one. A couple of tools of the trade, of course. You know, we know it's hot out. Um, really planting any evergreens like this. Keep the water up to them. Having a soaker hose like this running in a lineal line underneath at the root base is a really good idea when you're planting a natural living fence, particularly at this time of year. And you keep that water up to them until the ground freezes. Uh, planting in the heat. By crikey, it's going to be hot today. Uh, make sure you drink plenty of water. Take care of your plants. Using a little bit of root stimulator like this helps reduce the shock of transplanting, gives them a little bit of a boost as well. And we talk about it all the time, or I talk about it all the time. Uh, you know the drill. Add some compost, add some mulch on top. That is really, really beneficial as well. Plant in the morning too. It's not as hot. It's actually quite nice out right now, a little bit hotter in the afternoon. But uh, some great ideas to create a natural screen like this. Create a little privacy, a little noise buffer. Back to you. And it's beautiful too, so it's a win-win, win. -win. win.